So as we approach our debt-free journey, we are prioritizing paying off our loans. We are focusing on decreasing our expenses, but we're also finding the opportunities present to us and using our, our financial gifts for those things as well. And I encourage you to do the same. It's a balance, right? How can you balance those good things and keep them pure while also balancing enjoying the present? What should his name be? <laughs> <laughs> Today we wanted to give you guys an update on where we are at in our debt-free journey after one month of really committing to paying off debt and focusing more intentionally on how we can reduce costs and be good stewards of our finances. Down. You just sunk like Maybe a hope. foot. Basil. Hi guys. Hey guys. I'm Jen. And I'm Chris. And we live here at the Sunshine Farm. I'm getting a little distracted right now because um, our miniature horse is rolling around in the snow. <laughs> our cats are climbing one of the chicken coops. And we have some uh, cute little fluffy, fluffy faced chickens here with us. You're funny. I can hear you where you are, right? Open. Where are we at? Um, I'm just going to recap episode one, but if you haven't seen that, please jump back and watch that. I will put that in the cards above. In episode one, we talked about how we have three debts to tackle. The biggest being our mortgage, we are hoping to tackle in the next 10 to 12 years. Our two other small debts are our car loan, which is only what? At the time of the first video, it was about $2,000 left. So now we have only a little over $1,000 Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we've tackled that uh, full force. And then the other debt that we have is a small school loan, and that's about six or $7,000. Yep. Two small debts and then one large one. And we just wanted to share with you guys how we are going to prioritize paying off those debts <laughs> and really also avoid taking on any new debt. So where are we at, babe? So as Jen said, we started this journey about a month ago, and uh, to start things off, we doubled up our current payment on our car loan to expedite that. We've been blessed with some extra funds that have come through in the past month that we've been able to really prioritize and keep putting towards that car loan so we can snowball that and get that paid off. Chris found out about his bonus that was coming in through work that we never really planned for just because it's unpredictable. But it came in um, and we had about $1,000 to put directly towards our car. So we basically cut the remaining balance on the car payment in half, um, so a big step towards getting rid of that payment altogether. Another thing we discussed in our first episode of the debt-free journey was setting up a cash budget and using that as a way to control our spending and uh, make sure that we weren't just getting things because we wanted them but focusing more on our needs. And so we haven't fully jumped into that yet. This month has been kind of crazy and so we've been kind of trying to get back into the group of things uh, as January's gone along. So basically, we're hoping to have a dedicated checking account with Ooh. debit cards that we both use. Yes. And on a week-by-week uh, -week basis, we'll deposit money from our other checking account, a set amount based on the budget that we've established for that week. So whether that's groceries or fuel for our vehicles, or if there's anything super crazy that comes up, we can always we always have a credit card if we need to use it for those kind of things, which we pay off immediately once it's due. Okay, I have to grab this, this grocery over here. He's so handsome. So basically, we have that money set aside each week for the expenses that we know or that we can approximate that we're going to incur. And then we can take any money that's left over at the end of the week and put it back into a savings of some sort, which we can then continue to funnel towards our debts and the things we're trying to pay off as part of this debt-free journey. I had to show you guys this guy because he is just so handsome. Look at him. He doesn't have a name yet. 
comment below what should we name him we're trying to go with the, the parks and rec theme right now i think for the silkies because we're uh, re-watching that show right now yeah we've gone the office theme with our our main chickens and so parks and rec it seems like it is for the silkies yeah i mean he's super handsome and we've got tom gorgeous. haverford already in case we you just named that. tom haverford um this guy is kind of the bottom of the pack i feel like in terms of the roosters there's three and there's one that's like clearly in charge this guy i feel like is are, number three are there three there are three so rooster names comments below yes. love to hear your ideas you talked about where we're at and i wanted to talk a little bit about kind of how we're thinking about this whole journey ideologically philosophically all of that mm -hmm. because something that's really been on my heart lately is there can be a tendency when you're talking about being debt free to focus so much on the future that you lose sight of the joy that can be experienced in the present moment and i think the debt free journey can be a really cool way to experience more joy in the moment because when you're more intentional with your finances and more thoughtful with where you spend your money it can make you more grateful for what you have more focused on spending your money well on things that you really think will provide immediate value in your lives i think you can sometimes let a focus on paying off debt get in the way of opportunities directly present to you. What I mean is maybe you have family that lives far away and it's expensive to visit them. Those are relationships that you don't want to let wait years and years and years until you have this extra money to spend. Prioritize those now. While you're working on being debt free, really consider making sure you're not putting all of your money towards just paying off debts, but also finding opportunities to build relationships with others. I just went out to California for my dad's 60th birthday, and that was, you know, a, a few hundred dollars to go. We could have put that towards our car, we could have paid off our car sooner, but we're not guaranteed 10 years from now. I'm not gonna be able to go celebrate my dad's 60th birthday in 10 years. That will be gone, that moment will be behind us. And so I thought it was a really valuable chance to use our finances and prioritize relationships. And that trip was really great. I would not change that. Like I wouldn't go back and spend that money any differently. So as we approach our debt-free journey, we are prioritizing paying off our loans. We are focusing on decreasing our expenses but we're also finding the opportunities present to us and using our, our financial gifts for those things as well. And I encourage you to do the same. It's a balance, right? How can you balance those, those good things and keep them pure um, while also balancing enjoying the present? So that's kind of the message I wanted to share with this, balancing paying off debt while also embracing the present. I think with any good thing, we as a the human race tend to misconstrue it and to try to make it higher than it really should be. Yeah, not becoming obsessed with something, then it, then it ruins the whole thing yeah. to begin with. You can make a good thing a bad thing very oh, so easily, easily by focusing too hard on it and making it too superior and ultimate in your life. Not everyone has the same kind of privilege to be able to do this, and I just want to acknowledge that we are in a really unique situation where we have opportunity to prioritize paying off our debt. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has that situation and I don't want to push this on or say that this is the only way you can live life. Yeah. It's just a, a great way that we are excited about. It's really about your goals, what are you looking for, what do you want out of life, um, and trying to find ways to match your decisions and your finances towards those goals. So what's next for us in our debt-free journey? Where are we going to be at in the next month? We have how many months left of our car payment? So we have like four payments left and the last payment is about half of what the other three are. So to decrease that even further, we're going to divide that final payment into three and just make three pretty large payments that will be done paying off the car in April. Yeah, and we're, and we're thankful to have the flexibility to, to do that. You know, I'm sure people in similar situations might not have the extra wiggle room each month in order yeah. to actually revise that payment amount and put more towards it, so. Yeah, we did not used to have so much wiggle room. Um, what's kind of, what we've noticed is we were spending a lot on setting up our farm and on food and on extra things um, or like emergency things that came up. And now we're just kind of privileged to not have those things coming up right now. So we have a little bit more wiggle room to prioritize paying off those debts. Another thing we really noticed through this debt-free journey, which has made us just way more aware of the money that's coming in, mm -hmm. is there are a lot of instances where you have like unexpected money coming in. Yeah, so for example, we have a credit card which uh, that we actually have through Costco, which gives us cash back on a bunch of different purchases, but they only give you the cash back once a year, 
So you kind of forget about it most of the time yeah, and totally. you realize you're accruing this the whole year and then every February they're like, here's a big fat check basically of all the, of all the cash back bonus you've accrued. Yeah. And so typically we would take that and be like, okay, what, what's the big investment we could put this towards or should we just put it in our savings and let that accrue some interest there? Yeah. Um, but this now that we've kind of rearranged our mindset and we see extra money, extra income that's coming in as something that can be used to get us closer to being free from debt and having more freedom in our lives, that's really incentivized us to take those things and to use them in that manner and get us there quicker than we would have expected when we first started on the journey. We can ah! Whoa! <laughs> do, you the, do you see the cat climbing? So we're going to be finishing up the car payment in April. We're going to move on to the student loan, applying all the money we were putting towards a car payment to the student loan. And then hopefully in less than a year, we keep moving in the direction they're moving, we should be able to get the student loan paid off hopefully in about a year from now. So then a year from now, we'll be able to put um, all of that money that we were putting towards those loans towards our mortgage. And you know, current projections, we should be done paying off all of those things in our mid to late 30s, which sounds like a really long time, but it, it's a lot different than our 50s. Yeah. So we're excited about it and we're excited about this process and what it's taught us. It's definitely helping us have better communication and share goals a little bit more intentionally. I think it's something that gets us more excited about our finances too, instead of constantly feeling like it's an area of stress in our lives. When we put that bonus towards the car loan, it's something that I got amped up about because I realized how much closer we were to paying this off than we were you know, just a, just a day previous. Now I have less fear or anxiety about the random random expenses that come up, like a big car fix or uh, you know something that needs to be done at the at the house. And I've noticed a lot less fear and anxiety because I realized that we're starting to get rid of some of those those weights and those fixed expenses that are kind of dragging us down every yeah. month. Yeah, more flexibility and confidence in what we have and how we can use it wisely. Well, we thank you guys for watching our video. We're excited to continue sharing our debt-free journey with you. Definitely subscribe if you want to continue to see yes. updates on these videos. Um, that thumbs up button if you guys like this video. Yeah, um, you can even hit the little bell if you want to be alerted when we post a new video. But we're so grateful to be sharing this with you and have this platform to be transparent with our finances and our journey. Thank you guys. We can't wait to share our next video with you. Thanks guys.